Alright lads, welcome to my review of the AR196A3. This is the first reward for the plane based challenges for the ongoing Operation Summer event. Taking a look at the stat card, we can see that this plane is a rank 1 battery rating 1.7 hydroplane located in the German tech tree. It has an RP reward modifier of 300% and a silver line reward modifier of 180%. Bear in mind though that I am using a premium account, so if you are free to play these may be lower for you. Taking a look in the tech tree, we can see that this vehicle is rank 1 meaning it will be effective at researching vehicles between the ranks of 1 and 2. For an expert qualification in this plane, it will cost you 3,000 silver lions, and for the ace qualification, it will cost you 40 golden eagles. Alright, so moving on to engine power and performance, you can see that the plane is powered by the BMW 13K radio engine, which has a takeoff power output of 974 horsepower. While the engine is powerful enough to get you up to a top speed of 320 km per hour in the horizontal, the high weight of the fuselage gives you a rather measly 7 meters per second climb rate. Because of this, I'd recommend never needlessly giving up your energy on altitude, as it will be very hard to recover these things once you'll lose them. The high weight of the fuselage also explains the rather awful 21 second turn time. Bear in mind that this is a battery rating 1.7 vehicle, and you will be mainly fighting against biplanes and early monoplanes. So the AR196 has a full turn time of 21 seconds, but here in the Soviet tech tree, the late model Chaika, which is a biplane, does it in 13 and a half seconds. And the I-16 Ishak, which is a monoplane, does that in 18.8 seconds. This makes the AR196 rather poor at turning and has a rather weak engine as well. The engine is also pretty prone to overheating, so there's not much to say about the performance of this plane. This plane also has a fairly unique weapon loadout for a battery rating 1.7 vehicle, and is probably the highlight of this plane in general. You're armed with a single rifle caliber machine gun, as well as a pair of MGFF cannons found on the early BF-109s. You have 500 rounds in total for the rifle caliber machine gun, but only 120 rounds for the cannons, or 60 rounds per gun. As you can see, you do have a fairly wide choice of belts for your uh, 20mm cannons, including an air target round, but still, 60 rounds per gun, it's still not that effective, especially if it's a low tier, so you might not be used to flying. This plane also carries two 50kg bombs as standard, which cannot be removed. While not particularly useful for destroying anything, they can be used to destroy light ground targets in RRB matches, or ships in naval matches. You do also have a single rifle caliber machine gun at the back of the plane for defence, similar to the one found in the JU-87. Alright, so we're going to set our gun targeting distance to 400 meters with vertical targeting on. Something worth noting about the AR-196 is you do get an auto bomber spawn, so you will spawn above the fighters below, which is good for us because we do have a weak engine as I mentioned. So we'll start above the enemies and at speed, which should help us. Just me and the boys. Float boys. Not actually sure how this plane is going to react. First impressions, the roll rate is pretty poor. Elevator authority seems pretty good. But that roll rate is going to make it very hard for us to get shots on target. Rudder as well seems pretty good, but it remains to be seen how it will do in an actual dogfight. Okay, so we're coming up to the enemies. They're all below us. I want to get to this I-153. I think it's the Chaika. I can't remember the actual designation name. But I want to get above them and try and boom and zoom and see if we can fight that way. It doesn't seem to be very good at turning, as I've mentioned. 21 second turn rate. It's not very good. So hopefully we do retain some speed pretty well in a dive. I and mean, hopefully we can put that to some use. We might go on to this. I'm not sure what it is. It might be a... is it the flying barrel. A buffalo. I'm going to try. I don't know what the rip speed of this point is. Oh, I've just found it. Pull out of that. So, okay, so it's not a boom and zoomer. We've established that quite directly. It does seem to have good turn rate when you are at your at the top end of your speed. But I think I'm going to over speed here. Yeah. So I'm finding it hard to do anything, to be honest. You can't turn, you can't dive. I'm not going to be able to roll into this guy. Okay, well we've got the kill on the Chaika. I think it's the premium one you get when you start and you choose the Soviet tech tree. Holy moly, this is... I just wanted to be a C point, I didn't want to get shot up. Okay, so you can see that we came out of a dive and we've kind of lost all that speed. So like I said, don't give up your altitude if you don't need to because it just leaves you pretty slow. Jesus Christ, this flak is intense. 
This is like rank one. Why is it so big? Earthfield AA is not this intense at top tier. Oh, we've been twatted. Oh, okay, engine over here. Okay, so second battle near east. I've put my gun targeting to down to 250 meters. You don't really need 400 meters on this point. But apart from that, nothing's changed. I'm going to re-engage this B-17. I don't know if that... Does he actually have weapons? No idea. Going to find out though, I assume. Yeah. Well, kind of traded. We're not on fire. Practically dead. So we're going to have to try and use our air speed that we've got left. So we want to drop behind that HE112. It looks like he's trying to star climb. Or hang. Hopefully that Chika can't get me. That would be seriously not fun. Well, this is going to be a dodgy shot just because it's... Well, we've crit the HE112, but I'm not, we're not going to escape that uh, fucking eye shot. Yeah. Unfortunate, but there's not much we could do. Okay, so our third game. Hopefully it goes a little bit better than the last game. Don't, we shouldn't really have gone head on there. We threw it away, but... Got two kills. We'll see what we can do. Is that a Kingfisher? My, my. That is... That is suffering. I don't even know if you can still get Kingfishers in the base game. I know they removed it. Because it, it doesn't have any offensive weapons, maybe. I'm not sure. He's either a veteran or... Suffering. Which is pretty much the same thing at this point. But onwards we go, boys. Okay, so we've got two AR... Oh, wait, that's the same as us. I didn't realise it was an AR196. Well, we're going to see what this plane can do. I'm going to try and bait him. Oh, the roll rate on this plane is very bad. So, we are in the same exact plane as him. We should make it an interesting fight at least. I'm going to put our flaps back to raise to get as much air speed as we can in the downwards. I'm going to put them back out again as we go into the climb. Now we extend fully up here. We should stall ourselves and he should go in front of us. Full landing flaps. You can see he's now overshot us. Oh, it's a bit dodgy though. Flaps back to raise because you don't want to lose too much speed. Right, flaps out again. No, I think he might try and run here. No, he's staying with it. Oh, that camera. Don't like that. Oh, it's stalling. Not got any speed. Ah, oh, it's not done as well. Oh. What? Okay, well, type in chat. Okay. AR196 gunner OP. I might as well just let the gunner go in the pilot seat. You can do both jobs. Don't need me. That was pretty funny. I didn't deserve that kill at all. That guy was probably going to kill me though. Right, need to get my focus back. Nimrod. P26, P shooter. There goes his wing. Nimrod. British biplane. Anything behind us. So we don't want to go straight down in a dive because we do have a pretty poor dive speed as I mentioned in the first game. Now this biplane... This is... I don't know if this is seal clubbing. Can't... Holy shit, well, not matching that. I'm going to go into a little bit of a clan. This really is a fur ball. Oh, that's not good. Okay, well. We did trade. 
By the way, I'm not saying this is how you should fly. I'm being very, very reckless here just to get some exciting clips. Well, when I was zero. If anything, it's just made us more aer aerodynamic, to be honest. Oh, we've got eight seconds of fuel left, boys. What can we do in eight seconds? I'm guessing not at all. Not much at all. Alright, so to conclude, the AR-196, it's a pretty decent little plane, it's nothing special. Like, we're all just getting this on the way to the F-11, whatever it's called, the, the jet. No one's really grinding for this plane in specifically. Being rank 1, it's only going to be able to grind you up to rank 2 efficiently, and like most people that play in Warfund, they've probably already even got here. In terms of the reward modifiers, you're not really going to get a lot, 180% silver line modifier, you're not going to be able to grind money with it. And even the performance of the plane, it's a, it's a lacking in pretty much everything. It's got a weak engine, it's got weak dive characteristics, so you can't even outspeed people. It's got a bad roll rate. Its turn rate is a little bit hit and miss. It is better when you use the flaps, but... And even its guns, even its 21 meter cannons are rather underperforming. They don't have that manga shot round that you find in a, the later German belts, but... So, it's, it's nothing special. I don't know if this will go on sale if you missed it. But I wouldn't really recommend buying it. It's an alright for me. Uh, I like collecting the vehicle, vehicles in War Thunder, but I wouldn't go out of your way to get this. And if you're not really that bothered, then I wouldn't grind it just for the sake of it. But I hope you found this video useful. And as always, thank you very much for watching, lads. Mm -hmm.